Okay, our next talk is from Florian Gabriel Conroe. Okay. Uh, Florian is a research engineer at the uh, University of Manchester and he's going to give you a talk on the Maxine virtual machine on the risk file. Okay. Thank you. Take well, first of all, I'm honored to, to receive the award for student of the year. Um, during my bachelor's degree at the University of Manchester, I ported Maxine game to risk file. So on our agenda today, first of all, we are going to answer the question why is Java important to, for the RISC-V ecosystem. Then we're going to present the state of Java on RISC-V. Uh, talk a little bit about Maxine VM and how the report was accomplished. And then uh, we are going to present uh, future research which we plan to do on, uh, on Maxine VM and uh, RISC-V. So why is Java important? Why, why is Java on RISC-V? Well, Java has been around for uh, around 20 years now, actually more than 20 years, and it still has the required highest rating on the QOB index. It's platform independent and high level, and it's also a developer friendly language. And also, some people prefer Java on IoT and SOC devices. Well, next, on our agenda, we're going to talk about the state of Java on RISC file. Well, so far there have been a couple of JVM supported. Uh, there is often JK0, but this runs only using inter the interpreter. There's a JIX RVM, which is not publicly available. However, there's a paper written about uh, how the port was done. There's often J9, which is not fully merged yet on, into the main branch, and it also doesn't support JIT compilation, which is just, stands for just in time compilation. Also, it, it, it only has the, the interpreter, basically. And then there is Maxine VM, which supports JIT compilation. Why is JIT compilation important on Java? Well, actually, how, how does it work? Well, uh, at, when, when you start running the Java program, the JVM profiles the code at runtime, and using this information, it identifies hot code segments. Uh, then it JIT compiles those to, to native machine code, so it doesn't interpret the bytecode. So out of all available, this this actually provides great speedups for uh, for the for the JVM. Without JIT, JIT compilation, you you have a really low uh, performance. So out of all available VMs, only Maxim VM features an operational JIT compiler at the moment. There's also JXR VM, which has the JIT compiler ported, but it's not released. It's not public yet. Uh, next on our agenda, we're going to present Maxine VM. Well, first of, first of all, a little bit of history. Uh, the project started in 2005 at Sun Microsystem. Uh, then Sun Microsystem was bought by Oracle. In 2013, developers stopped working on the Maxine project. And in 2017, the project was forked by the University of Manchester and it's currently maintained by the university. Maxine VM is a metacircular runtime system. This means that the JVM is written in the same language it executes, in this case being Java. And its main purpose is uh, to be a research VM, a place where developers or JVM scientists can uh, implement ideas and uh, see how they, uh, they work. The internal structure of Maxine VM. Well, Maxine VM features two compilers. Tionex and Tionex. Tionex is the template-based tem tem it's a template-based compiler. is the baseline compiler. Maxine, it's, it works very similar to how an interpreter does, and uh, the main performance metric is uh, throughput for Tionex. So with Tionex, we want to generate code as fast as possible, not a very efficient code. Machine code. Then. And then there's Cionex, which is the optimizing just-in-time compiler. Actually, Cionex is a port of uh, C1 from C++ to Java. And Maxine also has two garbage collectors. It's a semi-space garbage collector and a generational one. Uh, so what I had to do to run Maxine to on uh, RIS-5, well, First of all, I had to implement the RISC-V ISA instruction encodings into the VM assembler. Um, as a hint to this, 
I used all those five extensions uh, which provide IC instructions apart from the V, P, C, and Q extensions. Uh, I also had to, to implement to to port the QNX and QNX compilers, obviously, and then I had to port to port adapters, which uh, are pieces of handwritten assembly, because the because the two the two compilers use different calling conventions. We have a QNX compiled method which calls into a QNX compiled method. For example, first of all, you have to adapt between the two calling conventions in order to be able to to jump to the CRNX method. Then I had to implement the stops. Stops are as well handcrafted assembly. Uh, for example, trampolines, which are used to basically impose as to their colleagues during the runtime. Um, and the substrate, which is underlying C code, which covers VM boot top, defines NDNS, uh, it registers the signal handlers, and so on. How, how I did all of this? Well, thankfully we have a testing infra infrastructure in place. This allows us to test compilers offline. We also have a paper written about it. Um, how, how the testing infrastructure works? Well, basically if you think about the compilers, what, what they do is they, they take an input byte array, which is a bytecode the GM and they, of the JVM, and they output another byte array, which is, uh, in this case, the machine code for the target architecture. So we are able to write Java methods, which we then take the bytecode, we call the compiler offline, we get the machine code, then we are able to inject this machine code into a binary, which we then load into QMO, we run the binary, which contains the, by, the binary the binary which the compiler generated. We run the binary and then we check the final uh, values of the registers. If the final values of the registers are the same as with what we expect, for example, if uh, the return register X10 is uh, what we would expect to, to be from our function, then it means that our compiler should have generated correct code, correct assembly code. Otherwise, there's something broken and we can attach, we can manually attach a GDB um, to to QM and start manually debugging, going through our instructions and finding where the, the fault is. However, some parts cannot be tested offline. For example, adapters, the adapters, the substrates, the stubs, uh, because they require the whole managed runtime system to, to be running. So the painful approach to this was to Cross compiler VM image, RISC-5. The VM image is basically a binary of the, of the machine, of the JVM, and then copy it to QMO running in full system emulation mode, and then manually debugging in GDB, which was very painful. <coughs> so we ran some benchmarks on Fedora 31 on top of QMO in full system emulation mode. Uh, we didn't have any access to this five uh, hardware on such short notice, so we had to use QM in this case. With the benchmarks, we are not at 100% pass rate, so there are bugs in, uh, in the implementation, which need to be addressed. Um, so on spec JPM, we are 79% pass rate, and on the couple, on 60% pass rate. Uh, the only comparison we did was with OpenJDK 0 because uh, JXRVM is not public and uh, OpenJ9 um, it's not on the main repository and it's harder to, to get the JVM running and it also doesn't have a JIT compiler. So on spec JVM, uh, on the y-axis you can see the operations per minute we have. The, the values are so low because we run here on top of our initial robot which has 86 uh, CPU which is uh, yeah, it's, it's very slow. Anyway, we're at least, in the case of spec JVM, we're at least four times faster for SIMAR than uh, OpenJ0, uh, and uh, many times faster in the case of crypto, which are different benchmarks. In the case of the couple, we're at least twice as fast than uh, 
OpenJDK zero on the y-axis. In this case, you can see the, the number of minutes it took to run the, the benchmark. So for FOP, we are uh, just uh, twice as fast. Next on our agenda, we're going to talk about feature research. Well, um, we plan to investigate how the lack of hardware for self-modifying code uh, influences JIT compilation in modern virtual, modern virtual machines, such as Maxine. We, we have already undertaken this kind of research for R64. We didn't do it for RISC-5 at that moment because the RISC-5 port was not done yet. We have a paper written about it. And we plan to do the same thing for this file. So basically in the managed front end in the in the JVM, what happens is that we have tiered compilation. For example, we have multiple compilers which create different ver versions of methods. So you are able we you have to constantly go back to call sites and patch them to point to the newest version of the, of the method. So we have uh, experience with four different kind, with four different types of patching and call site implementations, because you have to also take into account thread safety and uh, these kind of things. So with direct, we we out of we, we run the, the four implementations on uh, micro benchmarks. Then we took the first two and uh, implemented them inside Maxine, and uh, for our 64 and then run the the couple benchmark and found the, uh, the and had these uh, results. So with direct branching, which means that we only use uh, one instruction to jump directly to, to the method. However, this limits to how many to to uh, maximum offset you can have encoded in the instruction, which in the case of R64 is only 128 megabits. In the case of RIS5 is going to be only one megabit. So direct branching, we won't be able to. to Actually, we don't think we will be able to implement this data branch to this file because the offset which can be included in the instructions is too, too low. Anyway, we, we have these results. All right, so if anyone has any questions. Any questions? Yeah? One back. In, um, in Atmel's ABR32, there was support for interpreting Java bytecodes in hardware. You can put the processor in like a special mode for this. Is there, um, like cause in the RISC-V community, is there any efforts to do that kind of research rather than implement the JIT in software? As, as far as my knowledge goes, no. I don't, I don't think so. If anyone knows about it. What's the J extension for? Uh, the J extension for? Is it the J extension of Risk Five? Yes, it's a working group. Yes, it's. Uh, we actually have a, a, a partnership with them. We mm -hmm. want to. Actually, it's for the, for this uh, study we plan to do on Risk Five. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to to implement to add to the ISA instructions, which uh, can help. Uh, um, which can have self, which can have its self-modifying code in the, the managed runtime system. Any more questions? No. Okay. Thank you.